Let's talk about the new film, Smile 2, which is the latest from Parker Finn. This is a direct sequel to Smile. When I say direct, we start days after the ending of the first film. So if you haven't watched the first one, really suggest you do. But before we get into this review, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. Follow us on our Instagram. We have a giveaway we're going to be announcing on Friday. We already have our giveaway winners for Alien Romulus. So those winners have been contacted and they will be claiming their prizes. But we do have another giveaway coming out this Friday. So if you want to be the first one to know about that you have to follow us on our instagram which you can find up here and we will be announcing that giveaway on friday for a 13 days of halloween start so let's talk about smile 2 which i am just blown away still to this day so i already wrote and talked about it a little bit on our other pages which you can check out below but smile 2 was one of those movies that i was just so hesitant about because i thought to myself is there a way parker finn can really top the first one and i will tell you i was one that was skeptical about the first one i didn't know how to feel about it with the trailers and everything that was coming out. I just thought to myself, this looks like it could be good, but it also just reminds me of things we've seen before from Blumhouse and things like that. I just thought it was average. The trailer really misled me because when I sat down with the first smile, I was blown away as well. I think that Sorcy Bacon in that film was incredible. Kyle Garner as well, who was also in Smile 2. And I was just ready to see what Parker Finn was going to do next. And I was thinking he was going to do another film, but then Smile 2 got announced. And I was like, okay, I'm back. I'm here. Let's see what this one is going to deliver. Naomi Scott. That's how I'm starting off this review because Naomi Scott is truly what makes this movie incredible. That it should be in talks when it comes to awards, if awards were legit. And she should be in those talks because it is one of the most incredible performances all year. There are scenes in here that I'm picking apart in my brain right now that just really highlight just how much range this actress has. And I'm excited to see what she's able to accomplish in the future. Like, you know how people are talking about Tony Collette and Hereditary. Well, this is how people are going to be talking about Naomi Scott when it comes to smile. She really showcases such raw emotion and really gets into the headspace of this very troubled pop star because in the new smile film, we follow pop star Sky Riley as she is now battling the smile curse and tries to find a way out of it while at the same time dealing with her oppressive mother, her agent that doesn't really care about her, and also the weight of stardom and a trauma from the past, which I don't want to give too into because I don't want to give too many spoilers for the film. But I really love how Parker Finn's smile films have become this sort of allegory for mental illness and things that happen and we all deal with with trauma and also depression and all of that in isolation. And it really is showcased so well in this film because I think that Sky Riley, who is played by Naomi Scott, is such a well-developed character and you really start to feel these emotions that she's feeling, this sort of frustration when everybody's wanting this one thing from her not really caring to how she's feeling deep down and I really just felt that throughout the whole movie from her the way that Parker Finn also uses his camera and his direction here to make it disorienting to make it disjointed it really just adds even more to the mental break that Sky Riley has at the halfway point in this film supporting cast here is great as well Rosemary DeWitt who plays the mother of Sky Riley was such a frustrating character in the best way possible because you see and you hear her say all these things to Sky Riley and she's seeing that Sky Riley is not all the way there and you're just so frustrated with the character but that's just how well the characters play because it is a passive aggressive tone and sort of mannerism that the actress has that has to be played so well in a way that it doesn't come off too cartoony or it doesn't come off too passive at the same time like it really has to stick and I think she does a great job at making that stick. I really think that Finn is a visionary here because so much of this film relies lies on how exactly is he going to scare you and none of it really is those cheap jump scares or anything like that instead it is grotesque horrific imagery and these moments of silence and then you just get this very slight like look at something and it makes you jump out of your seat and that's always what I want to see like I'm okay with a couple of jump scares here and there in horror it is something I think the audience expects as well so that's totally fine but that Parker Finn doesn't rely on it really does highlight how great of a horror director he is and the brutality in this is amped up even more than the first one so if you were thinking that the first one was as nihilistic or brutal as it gets I am telling you be prepared to be surprised with this one because there are some moments here where everybody in the audience was just like what is going on here and I will tell you some of these things feel a lot more I would say terrifying than terrifying because 
because Terrifier has a thing where it just feels cartoony and slapsticky. Both films, by the way, are great. I love both, but they're both different in that sense. Now, it's been the year of pop stars, right, with Trap just recently and Naomi Scott's character of Sky Riley, of course, being a pop star, there are some songs in here. And I really love that aspect of it. I think the music is so bumping and great as well. I'm already listening to the Sky Riley EP on Spotify, so that's telling you something right there, just how great the music was made for this movie as well. And I'm very curious with the ending that Parker Finn has given us because it is such an ambitious and huge ending. And I will tell you that whole end sequence, the last 10 minutes of this film, I was getting out of my seat. I was ready for whatever came next because the imagery and everything that Parker Finn put together here alongside Naomi's performance in those last 10 minutes were just some of the best material I've seen throughout the whole year from movies, TV shows and all of that because it just looked so insane on the big screen and I was just thinking to myself no way they're about to do this because it was something you think is going to happen then it doesn't happen then it does happen and you're just like wait 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 are we about to go down this route and I just thought that that was such a stellar and amazing like choice that Parker Parker Finn did there. So I'm officially on the small train since I've been on it since Laura hasn't slept, which was actually the short that inspired the small film. And Smile was great as well, Smile 2 as well. And I'm excited to see where Parker Finn takes this movie now and this franchise because I think that there's just gold here, honestly. The amazing one-shotters as well in the film that he does, the one takes, were so captivating. The first 10 minutes of this as well are so beautifully done. And it is just something that you expect as well. But the way that it is framed and shot it just takes you by surprise it is such a kinetic film as well there's constant movement there's constant things being alive it never feels stale and at times the camera's just sitting there but it still feels so alive and that's something that's always great in a film is when the visuals are speaking to you without having to take these drastic measures or anything like that not that i'm a against mixing media and things like that. But, but sometimes that camera being static and everything else happening around it just adds so much more weight. Very excited for what Parker Finn does next. I'm excited for the Possession remake with Robert Panson. I think he's such a great filmmaker. Naomi Scott, like I said, delivers such a powerhouse performance. If the awards were real, we would see Naomi Scott be nominated. But alas, it is what it is. Overall, great performances, great film, great visuals, amazing story, and just amping up the antics with this one is what I wanted and I got it. So smile too. Let me know if you're going to be watching it or not. Make sure you follow us on our Instagram and we're going to be announcing a giveaway over there on Friday. So you want to be subscribed to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell as well as our Instagram, which you can find above. Let me know what you think about smile too. We will talk more about it over the weekend. So stay tuned for that. But as always, I'll see all of you next time. Stay safe, stay positive.